Okay. So let's go over your lab. Uh, there are two exercises to it. Um, it says create a first person. Pro you don't need to. You can still use the third 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 person project. Um, there's no reason. There's really no reason to go and make a th first person. Um, you can still use a third person. Um, I've gone ahead and I've made basically a new map. I'm just going to call this uh, save current level as. Uh, I'm going to go to. I'll just. Uh, here's. Here's lab three. Uh, let's go back to content. Make a new folder, lab 06. And I'm going to call the new map lab 06. And if I go, I'll put that into the folder here. Move, move the. Okay, <clears throat> so I've got that set up. And so basically we'll do our work in here. Um, let's go back to the lab. Uh, there are two parts. The first one basically is you're going to create a, blue, a blue, blueprint primer that uses a timer that periodically changes the static material of some static mesh actors that are in the level. Direct blueprint communication would use to reference the static mesh actors. What they, what they mean is basically... And I'm going to go, I'm actually going to build it right here, right now with you. So this is going to be a blueprint class. It's going to be a type of actor, and this will be BP material changer. <coughs> Dock it up here. All right, I'm going to go and add basically a, a um, I'll use a cylinder. For save argument, let's pull this out, and I will make it a thin cylinder, and I'll move it up uh, 50 units. Nope, that's that's unity. There we go. So I'll move it 50 units up. So it's about 100 units tall. Um, and this is basically here to be, and it's basically I'm going to rename this to be the model. I am going to do one thing, and it's going to be, I'm going to search for show in, um, sorry, under rendering, it's called hidden in game. So basically this, what I'm basically doing right here is making this model um, something to be a marker in the editor, but when I play in game, it's going to just, just disappear. Um, also, just for sake of argument, I'm going to go to the collision, and I'm going to turn it to no collision, because it's it's invisible. It's just really just here to be a marker. So I can go in my lab six <coughs> and drop in the material changer. All right. I'm going to go to our starter content and go to the prop section. And um, is it the prop section? Sorry, shapes. We'll use, sh use shapes. And I'm just going to drop in, like, here is the quad pyramid. Um, here is the capsule. <coughs> I'll put in a ramp. And I'll flip that out. There you go. Flip that around. And I'll put in this trim piece. I'll go to 10 grid. And I'll make it just so we can see it better. I'm going to jump up its size. Move this over, move this over. There we go. So these are going to be the material, the, the, the meshes that I'm going to use with the material changer. Um, I'm going to go in and select all these. And I'm just holding down shift. <coughs> oh. Where, oh, there we go. I was wondering what was going on. Oh, I'm going to go here, and I'm just going to basically do, uh, do a brick. Uh, 
So they'll all start with this brick material. We will change the, basically what this object is going to do is going to, we're going to assign, basically we're going to make an array of actors. And this object will then go into the act, will go through the actor list um, that's been assigned and just change it between. We'll use like gold and we'll probably use uh, rust because they'll, they'll show up pretty well. Or uh, maybe moss. We'll see. Um, moving, so let's go back to our material changer. So there are basically three variables that we'll want. Uh, first one will be the actor. It's the actor list. And this will be type of actor. It will be object reference. And I'm going to clear that out. And we'll turn this to an array, and we'll make it instance editable. And we need to for this case. Uh, category, this will be material changer. And this is, you should get into the habit of setting categories. Um, the other two things that we will need is going to be material A. And this will be of type material. Here we go. I'm going to use object reference. This may not be correct on um, top of my head. But we, we want to make it single. And then I'll make another variable. Material B. Um, I'll just for the sake of argument make these as editable and I'll compile. So now I can go back to this, the object here and we are. Um, I can set default values here and I'll do gold for the first one and then for B I will set this to be. Uh, There we go. Here's the error material that will that will definitely show up differently. Uh, compile and again, I didn't. Uh, let's go back one more time. And set these to the material changer section. And I hadn't compiled. That's why these weren't showing up. What's going on? There we go. So I'm going to add four elements, and I will then just drag. Uh, let's go back to the material changer. I'm going to lock the editor so I can just drag these in. There's a button up here for locking. OK, moving on, moving on. So. I've got my materials, I've got the list set up. <coughs> okay. Uh, bring you over here for one moment. Okay, so the way that, let's go to the event graph. So we won't need event overlap, we won't need event tick. Um, what they want to do is they want to sp uh, timer by uh, by event. And again, we'll say time will be, we'll set it to one for right now, and it will loop. Um, ideally, we would want to uh, create a float, make it edible, and we'll call this um change time set it to here and I again we'll get it and we'll ideally and this is just good practice to have variables that you can control um, it will it's asking for event and so this is where we will create add event new custom event and we'll call it change 
material. And this red box right here connects up to the event up here. Okay, so now that we've done that, we need to go forward and um, start start building the material. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is going to use something called a flip-flop. So the thing about flip-flop is that you need to keep this within your event graph. If you put it inside a function, you're essentially creating a new flip-flop every single time, so it does it won't work as you expect. Um, and so basically, these are um, basically are going to come out to the same node essentially. But we're going to ask, is a is it not not a essentially right here? Um, we're going to get our actor list, and we're going to do a for loop essentially uh, for each loop essentially, and we will plug in both the a and b into the exact function here like every time it flips we we want to we want to go to the for for loop so the array element is basically is the mesh what we want is its uh, static Here we go. Get get static mesh component. So in this case, I had to turn off context sensitive to get to get the node. Um, again, the array element is going to be oh um, I've done this as an actor list. Um, it's not we shouldn't be using the actor. We should be using uh, static mesh actor. Yes, change the variable type. Cool. There we go. So I need to get the for loop again to get the element correct. There we go. So I'm going to go back and I will say this This is not just the actor. This is the static mesh list. There we go. Compile that quickly. Um, again, A and B are going to go back into the exec. And now that we've got the static mesh component, we can set the, mat set the material. If I can spell it correctly. And I need two of them. So material A is going to get plugged into here. Material B and get plugged in this one. Again, element zero because there's only one channel. Um, and then ultimately the loop body is going to go to an if statement. And again, the is a is going to get plugged. I'm going to do a reroute node. I'm going to get plugged down in here. <coughs> and if it's true, I'm going to do material A. If it's false, I'm going to do the other material. And I'm going to drop these. Reasonably okay. And again, you know, this there is a lot of stream crossing, which is uh, not much we can do about that. What was that? Again, I'll go, go through this one more time. 
So we're going to start with begin play. So when, when, when the map starts, when the, this is going to get kicked off, we're going to set a timer. And we're going to use the change timer. Um, and that I want to set, um, I'll set a point to 1.5, just for the sake of argument. And I'll compile. I'm missing. Um, I also need to bring the static mesh component down here as well. There we go. So compi compile. All right. So it's going to set. So basically, you, this is the, the variable that we're going to set. Um, this is the event that it's going to call and it's going to loop. So every 1.5 seconds, this is going to get called. All right. First thing that we need to know is whether we are dealing with A or B. And that's why we've got the flip-flop here. This is what this note is about. And whether we're, it's A or B, we're going to go through the, for, the loop, and we're going to go loop through. So right here is essentially the for, what's going to happen each time we go through the loop on each element. So we do, um, I will bring, the, actually bring, the, bring the, the branch down here. Um, basically, I'm asking if, uh, is it A or is it B? So if it's A, we go up in the true branch, apply material A. If it's not A, it's false, we'll bring down here, we'll apply material B. All right. This is convoluted. I'll admit that. Um, this is only using two materials. I will tell you right now, extra credit. Like, we've got a static mesh list here. You should have a material list. You should have, and, and, and you should be able to go through that material list. But uh, here, I'm using, I'm doing only two materials right now, so I can show you the flip-flop method. So I can show, again, that's the big reason why I'm only, only doing two. Again, you'll still use the for each, each loop. And this will actually get cleaner. Um, you'll have a material list, and you'll actually, you'll probably, you'll actually set a, the car, like a current material. Um, wondering if I should, sh no, no, we'll leave it at that. You, 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 you should, you've been able to do, you've got, you've done, um, with the path runner already, like you've gone through a list of objects, you know, one by one at a time. Um, so you know how to do that type of code. So that's not an issue. Okay. And I'm going to save everything. I'm going to go back to the lab, the, the lab six document. And you can see that that disappeared. And then it's gone to gold. It's gone to that blue. And it's going to go back between those. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to go on the instance. And I'm going to go 0.25. So we go really fast. And you see they're flipping every half a uh, quarter second between the two materials. No, that would be too much. Yeah, so uh, we'll leave it leave it at that for now, and that's your first that's your first lab assignment. Um, your next lab assignment is a little bit odd. Uh, what we're gonna create? So we're gonna create. Let's go to the lab six document, and I'm gonna basically. What the goal is that you're going to make a trigger that you're going to walk into, and then it does that trigger does something. But it does the the class that so uh, we'll make this an actor, and this will be the BP trigger. And this is very much like our hello world, uh, hello light. We're going to basically add a um, a cube. Make it uh, point 0.2, we'll move it up, point 0.1, not, uh, not uh, is it 10? Yeah, just 10. Go back to our scene, and this will be the platform. And then we'll go back to our scene route, and we'll add a box collision. Again, we'll say, set the extents to 50, 50, 50, and we'll move this up uh, 30. 50? Yeah, 50. 
Uh, I mean, if we want to just sit, sit it on top, we can just do 60. Wow. 70? Okay, 70. And so, hello, we've made, we've made basically that platform as that we've, we've created before. Uh, we'll go to the event graph. Um, and then again, I'm going to rename this to be I'll delete that okay so now everything's set up correctly we'll go to the event graph um, we are going to basically just use um, we'll use we we'll use the event actor begin overlap and what we're going to do down here is we're going to create what an event dispatcher and this is going to be called detonate and we are going to call detonate um, and we're just basically going to say, so if something's overlapping, we're going to call detonate. Detonate, we have not defined that yet. Basically, we've made an event. When we make an event dispatcher, it means that we can, that this is an event that will be called that, um, basically it's, it's cast, it, basically it's cast to all the other objects. So we're going to compile. Um, I'm going to go back. I'm just going to make, I'm going to duplicate this, and this is going to be BP uh, spot. And I'm going to go in, I'm going to take out that, that code. Uh, literally going to go back to the viewport. I'm going to take out the collision. Um, and I'm going to make this basically uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. This needs to be, I think, five. We'll compile. And so essentially, um, actually go back to that one more time. And we'll give it a material. Uh, we'll give the, the basic asset. I'll use red. It'll show up. Uh, save everything. So essentially, basically, I'm going to go back to my content draw. I'm going to just drop this into the world. And it's basically a point in space. And this is, again, another one I'm going to hide the uh, actor hidden in game. And we can actually go back to spot. And because it's just that, that cube, I'm going to make it the, 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 the default scene root. So if we compile, we go back. You can see it's just now that, that, that cube. OK. Now, and basically, that actor is just, just there to mark a spot in the world. Um, the first thing that we will do is we're going to go to, we're going to actually go to the level blueprint. Take these out. Um, I'm going to make a reference to the BP spot. And we're going to add event. Um, And then we'll use add detonate. So it's an event. Um, why do I? We don't necessarily need. Let's go back. Uh, let's not select that. Just for the sake of argument right now. So here's the level graph. Here we go. Does it need? Wow, for some reason it needs, so I'm going to click, select the actor. Uh, so it needs some to select that. Um, so basically, this is the event detonate. It's related to the spot. Um, basically, we are going to play sound at location. This will be our explosion queue. And we will get actor location and 
plug that in. And then we will spawn emitter at uh, location. I'll grab my spot again. And in this case, I'm going to go to the transform. I'm going to split the struct pin so I can get just the location and the rotation. Um, I'm not going to play with scale. This is um, this is one of the things that, why did I split this? I want the location, I want the rotation, but I don't want to deal with the scale. Um, and that's because I don't want to scale the size up of the, uh, you know, if I scale the actor, I don't want to scale, like, basically the, um, the explosion as well. So that's why we're going in this direction. Uh, we will compile. I am going to... I need to put down instance of the trigger. And I'll put that over here. Move off by a little bit. Actually, let's move the material changer out of the way. Let's bring this right here. Okay, so we'll press play. And I go up. Oh, um, let me just go back to my trigger and where's the message log? Let's just go to collision. Let's just make sure. Set that to trigger. Okay. Save everything. Hello. Let's so let's just check the trigger is working. And this is gonna be a print. So it's not the trigger. So we can take this out. What have I done wrong? Oh, um, there you go. With I'm oh, sorry, I used the wrong actor. Um, when I when I created the detonate, I should not have used BP spot. I should have selected the trigger. And there we go. That's that's so I should have selected the trigger and created the detonate node with, instead. And then there we go. We can go press play. Hearing it explode. Let me bring up my sound. Uh, Real tech audio. Oh, watch that I didn't. Oh, yeah, I didn't select a, a, an, an, an emitter. There we go. So, debugging as we, as we work. There we go. Now off we go. And that's, again, here is basically the material. Again, here is we can call something in, like set up an event here and set up basically an event. Yeah, uh, this is the wrong. Here we go. So we can set up um, an event here and call it in the level of blueprint. It's basically what we're doing right now. We can connect um, other other actors to basically to 
to be what we need to do. So um, I'm going to save everything. That is your, your lab for this week. And again, it's not, there's not a lot here to do because of comparison to last week. So, and the documents that you have are very clear about what needs, what needs to be done. Okay. All right. So let's go over your PowerPoint slides. And I'm going to go through these pretty quick, quickly. Again, these are, they call these advanced blooper concepts, but these are things um, that you should, like flow control. So a gate, enter, open the gate, close the gate, toggle the gate. Does it start close? And if it's open, um, the, it, 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 it X out. So here, here you go. Another way we could have done this. Um... Here's a gate example. Health generator, and you can look 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 at this. Basically, here's a gate. Um, event tick. It enters. So every every frame, it's a uh, gameplay frame. It's t it's it's activating, and it only does things to your character if you are inside it. Not necessarily how you would build this, but it is a way you could potentially could could do this. Uh, multi-gate node. You can have different different gates. Um, it's equal. It could be random. Uh, so basically, each gate. So if you don't have is random on, it's going to go one, two, three. You know, each it's going to go down the order of gates. If you click on random, it will pick a random gate as it goes through, and it will only it will only do all of the the gates if you select loop. If you click click that on, then it, then it will continue doing all all of the gates. So it'll do all. Like I say, we have four gates going out. It'll do all four gates, and then in a random order, and then do the next four gates. In the, again, in the random order. Here is hitting, setting materials to things. Um, yeah, setting the material basically. Um, again, material display would be a static, static mesh. Um, hitting enter. Let's actually do that. Let's bring in lab six. I'm going to grab you. And I'm just going to go to the level blueprint. In this case, I'm just going to go and I'll use keyboard, enter. And I need a reference of the shape. I need the static mesh. Component. Uh, when pressed, this is going to go to a multi gate. And I'm going to add um, another pin. Uh, it will turn on looping. And again, this is basically we're going to set. Set the material, uh, and I'm literally going to grab this and multiply. No, not use comment. Again, this is where. So this will go go here. We'll go here. Go here. Uh, we will set the target here and set the target here. And you know this is messy, but it's going to show this off. Uh, set the asset. This will be um, there. You go. So we'll set this to red. This is green, and then Compile, back to level, and so hit return. Oh, okay, the shader hadn't compiled. So 
here is red, green, yellow. We'll go, let's go back and we'll just go and we'll click is random. And I'm gonna go back to the material changer just quickly. And I'll put that back to 1.5 so that's not blazingly crazy. And then it goes, so red, yellow, green. And I am getting multiples. Um, like that red just happened twice. So it is in different order. Right, let's go back to the slides just quickly. Again, um, go create create go as you go through play play with with the nodes this is this is more uh, for those who have finished the the collection game go back and play make like recreate the examples here go go have like basically go have fun is what i'm trying to say uh do once Uh, so after it's run, if the do once is called again, if the output won't run. So basically, you'll call here, and if it's it'll, if if it's okay, it'll, it will go off. Um, you can reset it. Pretty straightforward. Uh, actor begin overlap. Do once they you know. So they they only um, basically they have essentially event prepare detonator, which you need to kick off to to reset it. When you overlap, it spawns the um, explosion. Do n, it's just number of times it can do. So it's just like that. It's just multiple times. And there's an integer here for that. And you can get um, off. You can say what, where, you at, where you are at in the counter. Oh, so here is our switch on int. And they're setting the a weapon power. Uh, just showed you the flip flop node. So here is spacebar. You're setting the visibility of an object to something. Uh, sequence. So basically, help organize other blueprint actions. Uh, it'll start on one, then it'll start on zero, then do one, and then additional pins as as options. Oh, so it will do zero, it will do one, and then it will do two. Which is another way of setting things up. We we would have just looped like from here straight to game over and then from here to set timer, timer by function name. So this is a way to control, you know, when this, when this ends, it'll go to one. When this ends, it'll go to two. So... For each loop, again, we sh I just showed that to you. Basically, it goes in. What is the array of elements? And it will loop through all of the elements. Uh, switch on int. It will, again, 0, 1, 2, 3. What is the, you know, what is the difficulty? Uh, switch on string. So, in this case... Let's go to material changer, switch on string, and we will add, and then you can change the pin names here. So this would be um, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Medium. Actually, these should be ca oh, capital because these are constants. Be these are, we want to be as medium, hard. What the heck? I'll do one more. Um. Insane, <laughs> like Doom, Wolf and Doom level difficulties. But essentially, basically, there would be um, 
Let's make a, let's just make a, oh, maybe material changer, that's not, probably not the best idea, but okay. I'll add a variable here, which will be a string uh, difficulty. And this will end up being a string, a single string type. And we can plug that in right there. This is actually not the best way to do this. Um, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to show you something called enum. Uh, where is... There we go. We want to, we'll make a blueprint enumeration. And I'm going to do E so yeah I'm using an E in front of it for uh, enumeration and so enumerator is like a collection of things so uh, we're going to add um, it should be not add enumerator should be add item so um, Let's say, so for our purposes right now, our display name is basically going to be easy. I will do baby easy normal hard and then we'll do one more um, nightmare. Okay, so these are our difficulty lo levels essentially. Um, we will. I'm going to save this, and I'm going to go back to again. It is in the material changer. Um, I'm going to the. I'm going to put a new material. I'm going to do a new. Uh, this will be e. e so this will be diff difficulty level. And rather than being a string, it will be of the type E, e difficulty. Compile, and then we can then set this by those values. So these are the only values. So this is the thing about the string is that we could throw in nightmare into difficulty here, and it won't know what to do on this switch on string. Um, here with the, the new enum, we are controlling what are the values. So like days of the week, months, are you, usually are the typical examples that are thrown to you as, hey, these would be good as enumerations, sort of. Please, please. All right. Um, so we're basically going to grab my difficulty. I get that, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to switch on those enums. So I can do basically set up, you know, and I probably would have notes basically for here for each of these. Um, you know, set up easy, set up baby, set up normal, set up hard, set up nightmare. So here is another way of doing, here, again, we're showing the string. Um, here's how you do this more st more structured way is with enum. Uh, we will probably and again I'm gonna I'm not gonna make this public. Uh, actually I'm gonna delete these out. Actually let's cut let's just copy these. Let me put these into the lab, the, I'll put these here. Uh, let me get rid of these. Delete. There we go. So I'll put the, the variables here. String. Diff 
difficulty. And again, I'm using what's called Hungarian notation here to do what we need to, to do this, this work here. All right, let's save everything. Jump back to slides. Again, strong, uh, switch on E again. They're showing the mesh type enum, capsule, cube, cone. So that we've got a enum that of capsule, cube, and cone. And then it's setting static mesh, which we should be, uh, ideally should be setting something here. It's, oh, setting shape cube. So again, there would be another one, a capsule cone. Um, let's keep moving on. String and text. So format text. Um, Unreal has strings, which is just as you would you use strings in like C sharp or C plus plus, but they have the concept of a text, which is a formatted version of a uh, string. It's it's a string string plus. They also have what's called names, and this is like display names, um, at player names would be things that would be a name in Unreal. So just just know there are three types of strings in Unreal, and these are you know they these the name the text and name um, are here because they've always been the engines literally since Unreal Engine one. So. So player one, player two, player three. Here is they're now doing the result, uh, player name, and player. So they're they're formatting. So formatting text. So here is result, player one is equal to player score, time, and then they're doing an X, player name equal to player score. So again, um, Romero is the first player, 17 is the score, Luke is the second name, and 14 is the second score. And this is not necessarily how you would probably format this. Um, this is, again, player one, player two type stuff. Um, but this is, again, where we've got hard-coded variables. You would, I mean, what you'd probably do is use a for, like, you would be, you'd go through the act. So there is, um, in a multiplayer game, there's um, the player controller. And then each player controller has a player state. You'd literally go through the list of all the player states, get their name, get their score, and format it that way. So, hint towards where you're going in the future. <laughs> uh, append known, and I've shown you the append known. This is like really, really cool. Hey, I'm gonna do hello and then player name here. Um, again, make sure that you have a space after hello, the O and hello, so that you have the space in the string. Um, we used it to set up. Our huts. I know in the the examples, the previous example slides, they were using uh, things to process integers, process floats, process different things. Um, but I just this is very just pretty straightforward. And this is going again going to print the string out, or in our case, print it to the screen. Uh, string to int mode, and I again uh, take the inner, and this is basically a, a utility to transform between um, one value type to a string. So, um, and this conversion can also be done by connecting the get string node with a uh, pin of an integer input. They will it'll automatically create these these nodes for you. Cool. So math expression nodes um, x plus y. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't use expressions very much, but you can you can set up a, a math equation and you know plug in x, plug in y, re plug out the return value. So here is a math expression: weapon damage plus ability modifier plus enhancement times current status. Uh, LERP. So basically, the idea at LERP is that um, you have think think you have two points on a line, 
A and B. Think, think, and they could be the lowest value, could be the highest value. Again, they're using here they're using um, floats, but they could be vectors. And the idea is that um, you have a value from 0 to 1. Uh, 0 represents you're at A, 1 represents you're at, at B. And by slotting between that that be, between those values, you're going to get a, a value between those two points. Uh, curves get used a lot of like like if you like we set up a timeline. Um, previously, we did a straight timeline, but we could have set up a curve in that timeline, and that would have you know we would have plugged out the output into alpha. Um, again, why? Again, back to the doors. Like, why did we not use the lerp in that one? Because we knew where they were going to start, begin with. And we knew how far they're going to slide. Basically, basically, lerp is basically a as uh, b minus a times the alpha added back to a. We knew the b minus a equation. That was the the, the how far it was going to slide. So we didn't need to use the lerp. And we didn't want to go in and like set, hey, a a start point, a end point, a uh, b start point, b end. I mean, we could have done that, um, but we didn't need to because we knew how far the doors were going to slide. But again, they were simple doors. Now you may be in a scenario where you have other types of doors, um, and they open in different ways. So you know, we were building simple sliding doors. Uh, random numbers, so uh, random integer, random integer and range, random float, random float and range. We did see the uh, random Boolean. Um, it's possible to create a sequence of repeatable random numbers using a random stream. So there's a, a random stream variable that you'll create. Um, you'll set a, it's an initial seed and the default value, and then you'll plug that into the st stream version of the of the random integer or the random float. So these are controls, some math stuff. Let's go over the next PowerPoint slides. So more blueprint communication. So direct blueprint communication. Um, so basically here is a variable. Uh, what's going on? Material display. This is a horrible instance. So there is a material display variable of type material display. I don't know why you would use this class. That's why it makes this, this is not a great example. Um, but the, what, the, what they're saying here is that, let's go to, let's go to trigger. And we'll add, um, we'll add a variable here. Actually, we've got we can we can uh, we've created we've got components variable. So we got the collision and we got the. Um, let's go and say let's make. Let's go to the lab. Uh, let's let me see. Let's select the trigger. Make a reference to the trigger, and we can go and we can go. Components. This is not what we want. There we go. Um, could be collectible. Let's not be a trigger. Yeah, there we go. Get collision. That's that's where we want. The we want to get the variable collision. Um, and now let's go in. We'll, let's go back to trigger. Let's do one more thing. We'll make a new variable. Uh, we'll call this um, 
something, which will be a Boolean. Uh, we'll go back to here, and we will... There we go. Here's the class trigger, and he is getting something. Um, this was an issue because there are other references, other variables, uh, methods that um, are name collision. So Unreal is like, hey, which which of these do you want? But this now that I've, I typed in like the variable name itself, you can see that hey, with a reference of of a particular type, we can get access to its variables. Um, the one thing that you just just so you know, we go back to trigger. Um, you if you click on private, means that um, this this variable cannot be edited by other objects or outside of this class. And children of this class won't be able to edit it as well. So just just be be warned. Um, if you want to keep something internal to this this object and maintain it, um, then you you set it up to be private. Um, once you usually if you set something to be private, then you are creating what's called an interface to interact with that variable, uh, basically a get a get and set function. And those are public so that people can access and use use you set the variable as see fit. Um, this is the word that you will hear about this is called encapsulation. This is I don't trust the guy down the hallway to set the value this correctly. Again, like if we were using a string, the string for difficulty. This is this is why I created the enumeration as opposed to letting my, my friend down the hall set a string. Because the string, he could type that wrong. He could be an idiot and type um, difficulty um, not so hard. And that would be valid as far as that string. Whereas with the enum, he can't do he can't pull that baloney on you. He has to pick one of those five options we picked. And of course he's gonna pick baby because that's how he plays. But hey. To each his own. Sometimes you just want you just want the story. All right, we'll go back. We're gonna just compile. So that's what we're talking about here is that direct blueprint communication. Again, enter reset. Again, um, it's getting the whatever there's a static mesh component and then setting the material on that object. Casting in blueprints, again, we will cast, we've used cast already. The idea is the with cast is we're going to go from one of our, from a variable um, of a parent of what we have to uh, a version of that, of that variable that is a child. So again, in the coin collection game, we needed to, um, like we have BP collectible was our parent class and we had teleporter and orbs were the child. Um, a lot of the cases is a lot with Unreal is that um, Unreal has keeps references in the parent classes, so game mode is in game mode base. The um, player controller is is in player controller, but we have may have a specific player controller class specific for our game. Um, you may be given an actor reference. Again, um, a good example is Collision. What's the other actor? We're given an actor reference. Well, we'll cast that actor to say, hey, our pawn, default pawn class. And if that's the case, then we're dealing with a player. And that means this, this trigger needs to do something with our player. Everything else it ignores. Uh, here we go. So this is casting in blueprints. We've already did that. Uh, level blueprint communication. Um, you can create a reference to, you know, click, click on, you know, click on an actor in the scene, go here, create a reference. We've done this already. Uh, toggle visibility, the point light. So here is one of the ver ways. Um, oh, it's flipping. It's flipping. It's toggling. Um, I would not use toggle. I use set visibility. Um, why would I? Why do I hide away from using the toggle notes? I mean, they're there and they're useful, but ultimately, um, if you're not in the correct sequence or order, then 
the node basically you're, you're going to be it's about control essentially um when i enter the the tr the begin overlap um again specifically the, the the example i gave i said when i enter the trigger the light should turn on when i leave the trigger i should that light should turn off and so if i enter the trigger light is already on it's going to turn off and when i leave it's going to turn back on so that's the situation you can get into you know you're not in the correct order of things toggle is like eh, doesn't care whereas um using set basically is getting i this is exactly what i want to do again we talked about event dispatchers so enter click call call pressed and then we we, we add an event add button press starts again here button press starts rocket launch not how you this is the level print not how you would do input just saying i know this is like this is this might be something in the level like uh cinematic rocket gets launched so uh bind event so basically bind event to uh, be an overlap so this is basically um when this event happens it calls a different another event to do things. Um, this is not necessarily how I would do. So here, basically, it's calling um, when you create the item, it spawns, pick up, and then binds event to on destroyed. So when it's destroyed, it calls remove this event called remove item, and item count gets plus in incremented. Uh, blueprint interfaces. So when we talk about interfaces, we're talking about um, an abstraction of things where, like, um, a, good, a good example is health would be a good reason for an abstraction uh, for an interface. Like, hey, this object has health. And because it has health, it has a take damage function. And so what we can ask it, we can, and, and when we, so we're basically, we're adding a type to, so our class has its inheritance, but it can also, also take on interfaces as well. And so when we add an interface to an, to an op, to an object, then we're saying that we we're implementing that interface as well. So for our case, the health interface has a health value and it has, um, a function basically take damage and when take, take damage is called so so we can ask is this object of this interface and if so we can do things based on that interface so adding adding an interface adds a type to your to your object so based on the inheritance already like I've already inherited from actor you know it goes from object actor to my class I can then add an interface as well to be another type that class is of. Uh, go through, we're gonna like let you look at interfaces on your own. And that's gonna basically be it for the lecture. Again, um, let's go through. So if we go to the content drawer, we go, and we will say uh, blueprint class, and we will type in interface. Uh, here we go. It's under blueprint. It is here is function library blueprint uh, interface. It'll be PPI health and basically what we're going to do is we're going to add a new function here. Uh, we'll, 
rename it damage. Let's add a new function. Um, let's add health. And I'm going to obviously, this is uh, an input, we'll do a, um, a float. Damage value, we'll set that to be a float. And I'll go in here and I'll add so I'll have this function take floats. Um, again, these are read only. Like you can really can't you can't really basically um, change these because th these are going to be implemented by um, they'll get in implemented by other classes. So uh, we'll go in, we'll go in, and be like uh, new blueprint class. It'll be an actor. Um, Low up wall. And what you'll go is basically under class settings, there is, where is it? All right, it's down here. It is under imports, default namespaces, under, here we go. So basically there is implemented interfaces. We can go add, and this will be the BPI health. And automatically right here, it has the set, dam set health, set damage uh, function set here. Obviously, we'll set a, a variable here, which will be a float. BR health. This will be a float. I'll compile, set our default value to 100. And then we can go in, hey, set health. Plug it in like that. There's our take damage. So we'll get our health. Get health. We'll subtract that value. Um, and we could go, and, we, and I'm, I'm actually going to go in, I'm going to knock, knock, call. Uh, we'll just do set the health. And again, in theory, this is, you know, this is working. And that's, again, how I've just implemented, the, again, this interface. Um, we'll talk about interfaces later on. I'm not sure we're going to talk. We may not talk about interfaces. Um, but this is showing you an example of a, how you would use, create an interface and then implement it into an actor. And you can add interfaces to actors as you see fit. Uh, what's cool is that we can then inherit these interface, the, the, what we've created here for the interface. So if we wanted a specific type of health, um, health with shield, you know, for example. Uh, that then how we take damage would be different based on our shield, you know, our shield value, you know, then we take actual damage. So. All right. Any questions about the lecture? Again, yeah, I've gone through and I've gone blazing through example off example. Again, um, if you need more time to finish the, the the collection game, go ahead and do that. Then do the lab. If you finish both the labs, go back and play with these nodes and see what they do and do things with them. It's the only way you're going to get better is just playing with playing with the engine and playing what you can do. All right. I'm going to stop the recording right here.